Oh, hey, how's it going? I'm down here. Uh, one, one second. I'm just I'm working on my my deadlifts. Okay, keep it back straight. All right, we're gonna do uh, what is that? A clinging jerk? Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh. Oh. Something like that, I guess. I don't know. I do radio reviews. I have it. The biggest Baofeng Chungus. The 10 watt Baofeng from Radiodity. Spoiler alert, it does 10 watts. And look at this cool antenna comes with it. This thing's actually pretty interesting. It is the biggest Baofeng, though. No question. This thing is, is mighty big. Uh, I'm going to get it over on the workbench with another Baofeng. We're going to run through the standard set of testing. So, power output. We're going to check for spurious emissions. We're going to play around with the interface, give you an idea of what I think about it as far as is it like a usable Baofeng? You know, appreciate Baofeng isn't the most <laughs> robust user experience, so they're most refined. But we like to put it through its paces, Baofeng radios and other Chinese radios. I haven't done a Chinese radio in quite a while, and I gotta say this one just got me right out of my seat, because come on, it's <laughs> it's a 10 watt handheld. Do we even want that kind of life where we're <laughs> blasting 10 watts right to the dome? Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at what comes in the box, because it actually is a, a decent value for the price and we'll do those tests. So you already saw the springy antenna. This thing's actually pretty slick. Uh, you could buy this just off the Radioddity's website for any of your Baofengs. But it also comes with a, a Brie type antenna, um, a rule book, <laughs> a USB-C cable, an ear dongle speaker head thing, which is just not a very good, uh, good device at all. And I was hoping that there'd be screw, oh no, the screws are on the back of the battery. Yeah, there they are. And then it's got a belt clip. Now, it, it does come with a USB dongle, which, and it's a 5 volt, 1 amp, so a pretty, pretty low-powered dongle. And then a wrist strap. Can you imagine? I'm going to put the wrist strap on this because I think that's hilarious. I'm only going to use the wrist strap with this radio, definitely. That's the most efficient, effective way of, of holding this. But anyway, more, more junk for the pile there. But okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the testing right up front so you guys know what we're working with, if, we, if this is worth your money or not. And then we'll take a look around. And we'll give a look at the UI. All right, we're using our Farzo Meter 2000. Thanks, uh, Randy, for putting me onto this guy. But check this out. So we got a good dummy load on it, and we're putting out 10.01 watts on output. Fantastic. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do 70 centimeters. Now, something to keep in mind when you're using this is there's there's not a real band button. You can hold this down. That switches the A and B. But if you hold it down, it does nothing. If you hold down, frequency mode. that just changes out of frequency mode. Channel mode. So let's just type it in, then we'll go for. Four, four. No, 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 no. Frequency mode. Four, four, six, zero, zero, zero. All right, ready? Here we go. Not bad. Um, not the 10 watts, but that's still pretty impressive. 10 watts on two meters is, is not bad at all. I will get the scale out for this too. We gotta have a scale. We definitely need the weight of this bad boy. Now an important note, when I'm testing handhelds that usually don't go above five watts, I really just use my 10 watt 40 dB attenuator. And then I add a negative 40 level to this so that it'll it'll basically bump everything up to the 40 level with the, with the attenuation I have on here. Using this sampler, we're going to get a varied attenuation based off of what I set this to, and there's not like a readout on this. So I'm going to remove that level just to not throw us off. Uh, if you go to the top menu, you go to level, go to external gain, we want to set this to zero, and then hit one, X1, and then that should zero out. We'll check it. Yeah, external gain zero dB. That's exactly what we want. So now when I key up, um, I can adjust the attenuation just so that I'm not going to damage the, the device here. But are we on? Yeah, we're on. So 146.520, let's go ahead and dive in on this guy, and I'll adjust the gain as I need to. So what we're looking for is any of these spurs that show up. And you can see that 16 dB line is there, so we gotta we got to adjust this a little bit. We want to get that north of 40. Now, one of two things is happening. Uh, one, this one and two, they're on the same frequency, so I could have a bit of a problem with my with my meter, but all those other lines, they're, they're gone. So as we've ran through, gotten more test points, we don't have any of those harmonics. So this looks like a clean radio. I will go grab a talk pod to show you what a dirty radio looks like for comparison. 
For a reference point, here is our 40 dB, our 10 watt 40 dB back in line, a negative 40 level change directly in. Here's our talk pod, the, the example of a spurious radio. Check this guy out when we transmit on this. Now, all those little numbered lines, uh, let's see, the third one, three, is the harmonic for the pr uh, fundamental frequency. And then I think the fourth or the fifth is going to be the third second or yeah the third so you you can see that these lines aren't going away they're staying there we'll just hold it down here and we're at about 30 db on the fundamental on one and yeah it's cresting above the line there the fourth and the fifth dirty radio dirty radio so that means that over on that frequency you're getting negative 10 db out which is loud enough as i've tested to hear this radio on that frequency, so on the displayed frequency, 146.580, you can hear it over on 400 megahertz and 200 and something megahertz. So it's, it's spuriously transmitting. Spurious, spurious. Now that we've got some of our required testing out of the way, let's actually talk about this, uh, this Baofeng. I showed, I told you that I would put a, a standard Baofeng next to it. And yeah, it's literally twice the radio and then some. You can see it's, it's quite an interesting side shot and a much, much bigger battery with that USB-C connector as well. Plus drop-in if you, if you end up wanting a drop-in charger. I don't know where you get one of those. Maybe Radioddity has it. Looking around the radio, though, it's, it's exactly what you'd expect off of a Baofeng. It's just bigger. The connector's the same, but that's the, that's the connector. It's just got a bigger door. It's got a volume control on the top, but now it's this knurled knob, which is, which is actually really nice, this knurled knob. It reminds me of those... Um, PTT over cell phone radios that we were playing or talking about a little while ago. On top, there's a light, and then now you have a third button. There's two buttons down here, as well as it looks like a screw of some kind. But let's go ahead and put an antenna on this so I don't blow it up. Although I, I have little fear of actually doing that to most of these handhelds. They're not really going to break. But all right, so going around the top here, top button, it should be the weather radio. There, yeah, we got weather. Max volume. That's about 75%. Oh. Touchy. All right. That's about 75% volume. All right. So that's the weather on the top button. So let's get out of that. Next uh, button is obviously your PTT on the side. Next to that, radio. Sounds pretty good, actually. Thank you, KUSC, as always. Below that is your flashlight. So yeah, it's all standard Baofeng things. There's nothing really different, except uh, we're, we're down a button on the face here. Nobody really uses this band button, really. Um, you just kind of A and B your way into it in VFO mode. Oh, get out of there. There we go. Uh, and then VFO through that. So to do this, to switch from uh, VFO to, me uh, to memory, you got to hold down the green button. Mode. And now we're in channel mode. Hold down again, and then to switch between the A and the B, you hit the red button. So if I wanted to change this to 146580, the emergency frequency for the adventure frequency, then there we go. We're all set. Hey, look, we're, we're, we're testing on the side here. Okay, so, so far, everything is Baofeng. Everything's coming up Baofeng with this thing. Nothing different than you'd expect using this. Nothing complicated is, at all. Now, the menu is slightly different. So you don't lose the screen like you would on a Baofeng because it's, it's literally twice the size of the Baofeng screen. And you use the arrow keys here to navigate, which are, again, pretty straightforward. So it goes up to 46, squelch, your step, that's going to be your tuning. It has three modes of power, which uh, we'll test the power in a second. High, medium, high, medium, and low which, all, case in point, you should probably just leave it in medium and low in most cases, since it's going to be up against your head. Save power, Vox, wide and narrow, auto, break for repeater, repeater prompt on, or sorry, beat prompt, timeout timer. We don't have any tones selected, but you can. Very similar menu, scan, CTCS is off and on, you can turn that on. 
English language. Yeah, yeah. So far, it's pretty straightforward. Can you see that even? Jeez. There's a there in person. There's actually a, a, a gradient applied, so that's not the camera. It actually gets black down here. Stop it. Yeah, very very similar Baofeng things in the menu, almost identical. Which is good, because it's what we know. So why, why mess with what we know? Vox delay, yeah, sure. Uh, logo, oh, that's cool. We might have changed that. Standard Baofeng. Oh, wait. Scramble. It's got a scramble mode. Who, buddy? It's scrambling. It does some scrambling. Um, anyway, not really the point. Airband. So if we went to one two five zero zero zero, it does switch to AM. So that's kind of nice. Um, let's see if I can actually find some frequencies around here because we do have airband use around here. Now it won't let you transmit on AM. So this is not a aviation radio. It's an amateur radio that has the capability to receive air stations or air frequencies. So keep that in mind. In my process of listening, I haven't heard anything, but I will uh, play around with this. And if I end up actually hearing something before I edit this, I will add this in now. Maybe? Well, I hope I added it in. Now, I think the only way to demonstrate this is we, we got the little brother here. This is like baby bear. Uh, let, let's get rid of this for a second and bring in a similar sized radio. This is my XTS 5000 and it has a belt clip on it right now, right? The, the side profile though, it's identical. In fact, let, let's go, they're kissing. Um, they're, they're almost the same size wise. In fact, the, the Baofeng is wider than the Motorola uh, by a pretty decent degree, almost, look at it hanging off the edge there. Similarly weighted too. The the Motorola is a, a little bit heavier, but wow, that is uh, I didn't expect that. That's pretty insane. Um, yeah. Let me give you my thoughts about this. So size wise, this thing is is just a, an absolute beast, right? There's there's no question. You saw me hold it up to a regular Baofeng in the beginning, right? So just just look at this. <laughs> the comparison is just a crazy crazy wild comparison but also it's like four times the battery size standard battery on a baofeng is 1800 milliamp and this is like 5600 milliamps the battery literally is screwed into the side of it you can't even like just easily remove it so it's meant to be USB-C charged that's that's its game that's what it's all about you know I, I have to use this a little bit longer for a couple of reasons first Transmitting on this thing is what's at 10 watts is what's going to deplete the battery faster than anything. The second is if let's just say you're a moderate transmitter. What if you just listen often? How's this going to work for you? Odds are this is actually going to be a pretty decent just radio to kind of leave running around with you kind of wherever you go. And the fact that it gets air banned is going to be actually pretty enticing for some of you out there. That is a, a pretty cool feature all in its own. I, I'm a... Uh, I, I gotta say, I, li I like it. <laughs> I have to say I like it. It's not gonna fit into every one of my little chest rigs that I got, but I got a couple of mine that'll fit with. And then, you know, you can just have this, you know, just like right under your neck right there when you transmit so you can get the most RF directly into your dome. It, it, it's, it, it isn't the most attractive thing, but it's pretty cool. The knurled little knob, the, the, the speaker grill being kind of uh, with the fake screws is, mm, I'm not really there for it, but, but all in all, at the price point of like 56 bucks about on Radio Oddity's website, uh, yeah, they did send this to me, so take a look at the link in the description if you're interested. You can get a discount if you want to buy one of these. 56 bucks, is it? Is it two and a half times the, the value of a Baofeng? Well, it's, it's twice the watt output, so it's at least double the Baofeng, and it's four times the Baofeng in the battery capacity, so in an odd way, the math is mathing. 56 bucks for a huge Baofeng, but also twice the power output, a little bit more, and uh, four times the battery capability. Not bad. Hmm. Is it four times? I think I'm wrong. More like three times. But anyway, time will tell. I, I need to spend a little bit more time with both of them to, uh, to get a better handle on it. But if you enjoyed this video, post in the comments below because I had some fun making this. And I gotta say, I haven't had fun with the Chinese radio in quite a while. Uh, except for one that I'm going to be talking about in a future date that really blew my socks off. I'm Josh KI6NAZ73.